This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, how would you feel if you could paint this too? Well, I'm going to break this down into steps that are easier to follow than you might imagine so that you can have a go and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this down into steps so that not only do you learn about the painting process and techniques, but you also learn about the app that I'm using, Procreate. But that isn't to say that you can't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. Having said that, within the app, Procreate, I'm using their A4 default canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And the color profile is the sRGB, and it's the code that ends in 2.1. And it's here on the list by default. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using the brushes that come free with the app. So I'm going to be using within airbrushing the soft brush, the medium brush, and maybe the medium hard brush. Within inking, I'm going to be using the studio pen. Within luminance, I'm going to use the light pen as well as the nebula. And within organic, I'm going to be using the rainforest brush and maybe the spires brush too. In terms of the colors, I've already pre-selected a color palette here. Now each of these colors, if you go down to the value section, has a hexadecimal code attached to it. And each of these codes is down in the video description and you can just type them into here one at a time and press enter. The color appears at the top corner and then you can just tap it together yourself. Or next to the codes in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file for free to save you some time. And Patreon is the place where you can gain access to exclusive content, extended versions of these tutorials, and of course, support this channel. And I'd also like to say a massive thank you to those people who have either supported me in the past or who are currently doing so. It's made a massive difference to my ability to continue as a channel and keep doing what I'm doing. So thank you so much. And with all of that said and done, let's get started. So we've got a blank canvas. We're going to go to our colors. First color, we're going to drag from the little circle into the canvas and flood fill. We're going to go to our layers and we'll create a new layer, layer two. Go to our colors and we'll choose the second color on the top row. Go to the brushes. We're going to use the airbrushing soft brush. We're going to put the brush size at maybe 50%, 100% opacity. And just in this bottom section, I'm going to do a band of this color. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blur it in 100%. And that just creates a really nice gradient for us to begin with. Now, if it seems like it's a little bit too strong at the bottom, well, we can always go to the N and just dial it back as much as we need to. But we can determine that a little later on. Well, first of all, I'm going to create a new layer, layer three. Go back to my colors and I'm going to use the third color on the top row. With my brushes, I'm going to go to the medium brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to put the brush size at 5% and 100% opacity. And then just a little bit down from the halfway, we're just going to do a sloping line that goes all the way across to about there. And then we can just drag from the circle at the top corner into that area and it should flood fill. Now, if you think you've gone too high up with it, it's easy to fix. Go to the transform, maybe just lower it down a little bit until you're happy with it. Put it on the free form. Stretch it out like so. That way, any little gaps that have appeared when we moved it disappear. I'm going to create a new layer, layer four. I'm going to change the blend mode. So tap on the little N, scroll down from normal to add, and it changes to a little A. Then I'm going to go to the soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm going to go to the third color on the top row. I'm going to put it to 100% size and about 80% opacity. Just going to go to the center and just a little bit down from there, almost meeting with the other shape. One, two taps of that. I will come back to that layer, but I'm going to go back to layer two. I'm going to stay with a soft brush with an airbrushing, but I'm going to go to the fifth color on the top row. I'm going to turn it down quite significantly in size to about 20% and then down quite low at around 5% opacity. And then just in this bottom area, I'm just going to extend some of this light across a little bit more. Just tapping it in so it's got a slightly more mottled look. It's not as smooth as everything else. A little bit more on this side and then just petering out over there. Take it up a little bit, but not too much. Just tapping it in. Go back to my colors. We've got a pink on the end. Maybe I'll just tap some warmer colors creeping in over at this side a little bit. Not too much. 
Go to layer three, tap on it and put on alpha lock. A little checkerboard appears in the background of that thumbnail, which is perfect. I'm gonna to go to the rainforest brush. I'm gonna swipe it, reset, tap on it again. I'm gonna change the spacing, which is default at 27. I'm gonna put it up to 60%. I'm going in with the second color on the top row. I'm going to put the size at 5% and about 10% opacity. And I'm just going to bring it in, begin within the center, and it, it will go off towards the edge a little bit, but I want more of this bright texture here in the, the middle area. So you can scribble it in, you can tap it in, doesn't really matter. Like I say, go over it more in the center area. You definitely want more of it piling up here and then it just fades away there. I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur and blur that in just a little bit, about 5%. I'm gonna to go to the layer again, tap on it, turn off the alpha lock. I'm gonna go in with the eraser and I'm gonna set the eraser to the airbrushing soft brush, 2% size, maybe 60% opacity. And yeah, I'm just gonna Create a slightly softer texture here. Maybe the 60% is a bit strong. Let's put that down to 40. And I just want to take away a little bit of the, the harshness of that top edge, just a little bit. Create a bit more of a texture. So it looks like the, the kind of treetops in a distant area. And then we can always go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we can blur it in a, another two or 3%, that's fine. Go back to my brushes, go back to the airbrushing soft brush and just with a slightly lighter color so maybe this pink on the very end I'm going to put it to 2% size 5% opacity and yeah we could just use this to slightly at the top edge just create a bit more of a highlight but really not very much it's going to be a subtler thing I don't want to do too much of that at all just a few dashes and taps just sliding it kind of in this direction at the very top there until we get just a little bit past halfway and we're not gonna see it because we're gonna have a nice tree detail there. Okay, go back up to layer four. Back to my brushes, we're gonna use the Luminance Nebula Pen. We're gonna go to our colors. We're gonna use the first color on the middle row. Now it, it, it is a very dark color, but because we're using the Luminance Pen, it will actually make things brighter, as you can see. Now that's too bright, we don't want it that strong. So I'm going to put the size of it about 5% and significantly down, somewhere around the 10% will do. And I'm just going to start bringing in some kind of sweeping direction. And it's going to have a kind of cloud-like impact in this environment. It's not really going to be clouds. It's more kind of like Milky Way or space nebula type textures. Now, this isn't necessarily representing something that does exist or could exist in reality. It's just the kind of suggestion of that kind of formations in space really. So you can scribble it over certain areas. I'm just circling it in. So we're using default brushes in this tutorial, but if you'd like to bring your art to the next level, you could try premium brushes from Brush Galaxy. Brush Galaxy enables you to unlock over 50,000 premium Procreate brushes for a fraction of the price. And you can access over 20 different categories such as fur, lettering, nature, animals, and many others. So for example, at this time of year, in autumn, in fall, a quick search of leaves gives you page after page of really useful brushes and stamps that you might want to use in your paintings and they can be super helpful start now and get the first seven days for free join thousands of other artists using brush galaxy tools to bring that art to the next level the link is in the comments and in the description once we get so far i'm going to go to the adjustments gaussian blur and i'm going to blur that in a bit just to soften it in i'm going to blur it to 10 percent and we'll go back in, maybe just sharpen that up with a smaller brush. So 3%, still at least 10% opacity. And now again, we can go over some of these areas and just, just scribbling in really. Bring in some sweeping shapes, however we see fit. Maybe 3% is a bit small. Go back up to the five. It's less specific then. We don't want it to look too kind of scratchy. Just some nice sort of suggestions in here. I think it can work really well. And that will do. Stay on the same layer. We're going to go to our brushes. We're going to go to the light pen. We'll stay with the same color. We'll go up slightly to 15% size and we'll put it at around 50% opacity. Now, some of these are going to be relatively subtle, so I'll need to zoom in a bit. And these are going to just be kind of ones that you don't see quite as clearly. 
and just add some points, some clusters, and then other times it's going to be more spaced apart and that's absolutely fine. Move it around. And whenever you go over an area that's already got an accumulation, it's going to look brighter compared to a darker area. And that's quite nice. This is just the first subtlety. We're going to add some brighter points in here. Perhaps we'll, we'll create another layer in fact. We'll change the blend mode from normal to add again. So we've got a foundation, just a scattering of stars, but we'll create some more and that's going to speed up the process for us. So you want to put them in the kind of cloud formations too, because they're not normal kind of clouds, they're more space shapes. They won't necessarily be obscuring the stars. If anything, they might appear a little bit brighter in those areas. So once you've done an accumulation, a few more on this second layer, just takes a couple of minutes. Maybe we could go to that layer and slide and duplicate it. And then first of all, it makes them brighter, which is quite a nice thing. But you could also go to the transform, flip it horizontally, maybe flip it vertically and stretch it out to fit. And then you've just multiplied the number of stars that you've already got. So I'm going to move it up a little bit. Maybe I can pinch both of those together again. Now they're on one layer, slide and duplicate. Again, you get a nice intensifying of those stars, but I'm going to do the same trick. So on that layer, I'm going to go to the transform, flip it vertically and horizontally, maybe stretch it out a little bit, move it around. I don't know, I won't. I'll make it smaller instead. Do it to a top corner over here. Take the layers, tap on it, merge down instead of pinching, if that's a bit awkward. Slide and duplicate. So I'll stay on this same layer. In fact, now I'll pinch them together first. I'm going to stay with the light pen, but I'm going to go to a lighter color. So we've been using the first color there. I'm going to go for something, maybe the second color on the top row. And then as soon as we start using this, you start to see it will be brighter. So I'm going to put the strength of it, in fact, up to 100. And then we can just add where we want some really nice, intense stars. Now, they're still going to have a very blue tinge, which I think is nicer, rather than it being pure white. Makes it feel connected to all the other things that we've got in the sky there, which I think works better. Not to say we can't go brighter, we could go for maybe the fifth colour. Maybe just in one or two, same settings, we could just push and hold until it really spreads out that colour, and then it's just going to really pop by comparison. Just go for a select few to really bring them out. But I don't like this white colour quite as much. I think it's too much. So we'll go back, go to the second colour again. And then just in some of these kind of almost cloud-like nebula areas, bring them out a little bit more. If you lower down, I'm going to turn it down from 100% to 60%, a little bit strong in some of the lower areas. I don't want it completely empty in this lower section. Just add a few more in here. Try not to have them too uniformly spaced apart, try and keep it a little bit random. Some will be tightly packed together compared to other areas. It's quite a fun stage really, because you're just getting something quite magical straight away. Okay, we're gonna create a new layer, layer six, and I'm gonna go first of all, go to the airbrushing medium hard brush. I'm gonna choose the first color on the middle row again. I'm going to put the brush size at 5% and 100% opacity. And then I'm just going to do, not too high up because I don't want to obscure all of that, but just a new level that comes in here. And this is where the tree is going to grow from. So you can then drag from that corner into the lower area. You can see it's too oversensitive, so I've not let go of the Apple Pencil. You can see the blue line on the top is at 92%. If I dial it back, then you can see now it only fills in that area. If you go too far, 90% is too strong. In my example, well, about the 60 something percent, it only just fills in where I want it to. Much better. And from this point, we're going to do a tree. So again, stay with a medium hard brush. I'm going to turn it down to maybe 3% size, 100% opacity on the same color. And I'm just going to push up the base of our tree initially, have a little bit of a bend to it. Like this, perhaps. And then from different points, I can start some branches, just give them a little bit of a kind of wiggle. Now I'm not going to do too many of them, and that doesn't look great yet, but we're going to change to the inking studio pen. We're going to put the size at 15% and 100% opacity on the same color that we we're just using. 
which if you've forgotten is the first color on the middle row. I'll zoom in a little bit and then we can just have some branches that go off. Now I don't want them going up too high in our scene so I think that's about the limit and in fact that may be a little bit high. I'll leave it like that for now but certainly no higher than that. I'm going to have some branches that just lead off. Now you press more lightly to get thinner and thinner as they go and when you get a thin area and you want to have another branch coming off it you're not going to press on hard and have a thick limb attached to it. You need to make it appropriate and then that, even that will get thinner and thinner too. So a thin branch can only support a, another thin branch and it just needs to kind of gradually get thinner and thinner as it goes. And anything from there will only support a super thin branch too. Now I'm trying to do a combination of kind of graceful curves, but a tree won't look realistic unless it has some angles in there as well. So I'm, I'm trying to give a little bit of a balance combination of the two types of forms. So graceful curves, but then just some angles here and there too. Now trees and branches do take a little bit of practice, so give yourself some time and don't beat yourself up. If it's not quite going right, first of all, then just stick with it, keep trying, you'll get there. Might be if this is the first tree you've done, that you will struggle with this form a little bit until you are happy with it. But just try to keep it a mixture of those two types of forms, so graceful curves and then a couple of angles in there too. I'm just gonna get the main shapes in to begin with, and then I'll do some finer branches from that. Now I'm trying to keep it roughly central, but if it goes a little bit off the center, it's not the end of the world. There's no rule that says it has to be completely in the middle. Pressing really lightly. If you want to turn it down from 15, I don't know, to five, six percent or so, it might just make some of these finer branches a little bit easier. I'm really pressing lightly for them. Now many of these finer branches may get obscured with foliage anyway, so you don't need to worry too much. You can always go back in and add some more. So once you've got to a certain point, then we'll move forwards from that. So I'm gonna to go to the layer, tap on the layer and put on alpha lock. I'm then gonna to switch to the airbrushing soft brush, go to my colors, maybe go to the end color, which is the fifth color on the middle row. I'm gonna put it up to 10% size, maybe 15% opacity, and I'm just gonna bring it in that top area and it just it stops it being jet black it's going to take it to a slightly warmer lighter look and we can bring that down a little bit too but not all the way just to about there just softens them in slightly and that's going to work better stay with the soft brush i'm going to go to the second color on the middle row i'm going to turn it down to well maybe just into the one percent size 30 percent opacity i'm going to just start bringing in some detail into that tree. It's not going to be completely flat. We want some variation of tone. So it might be that some branches will cut in front of others. So you can just use this now to separate that part from that part, for example, bring one of them forward, push one of them back. It just creates a little bit more variation. We've got cool lights in our environment. That's going to help just pick up some and we've got alpha lock on. So you don't need to be overly concerned with being neat, which is great. And then in this area, we can just bring in some wiggles, just initial suggestions of roots for now. Bring some of that higher up. You can see I'm really not taking any great care with that. It's just stopping it from being completely flat. I'm then going to switch to the third color. And this color we're going to have to be a little bit more discerning with. So I'm going to go to the layers. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to stay with the soft brush, but I'm going to turn it down to slightly smaller on the 1% and maybe 20% opacity is enough. And you can imagine snow settling. Maybe I'll put it back up to the 30 actually. You can imagine snow settling on the top edge of some of these limbs, some of these branches. Obviously it's not gonna to cling to the bottom of it, but it will cling to any little areas there where you can imagine it, it could settle. So it would settle here, for example. Anywhere, any edges that would face upwards, where it has a flat, surface it could sit there and it could happily stay there for a while so in this area for example it can just keep zooming out so it makes sense it could sit in that region perhaps we'll turn it up even more actually let's go to the 50 percent so it doesn't look too translucent and we want to apply that basic principle to 
various points along the tree. Any substantial branches are just going to hold onto the snow a little bit. Okay, so just a suggestion to begin with, then I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer, but I'm going to put it underneath layer six. So grab it, drag it down underneath layer six. And I'm going to go in with the organic rainforest brush. Now I explained before when we tapped on it, we changed the spacing to 60%. So that's still the case. I'm going to go to my colors. Then I'm going to go for the fourth color. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to put the size of the foliage maybe at 2%. And well, we don't want it overly strong. So maybe about 60% opacity and then we need to go up into these areas and obviously these branches are going to have foliage associated with them so we'll start at the top with these finer branches just going to create a kind of dusting create some clumps at the ends where you feel like it, it looks like they should support foliage and leaves and we want a really nice pink color to contrast with the blues we're creating a really vibrant look to this tree and this is behind everything so this is the, the kind of lighter layer so we're going to have a whole section here at the bottom perhaps that is just pushed further back scribble it in even that's fine doesn't need to be overly neat i do want to retain some gaps that peek through there so maybe there's sections where there isn't as much scribble in large chunks though that's fine and we can also check the overall shape of the tree yeah it's okay Sometimes you don't know until you've done the shapes and started adding the foliage. How is the overall shape looking? If it, if you're not happy with it in some places, you could start to prune <laughs> some of the branches, actually change it up a little bit, and that's fine. So I'm going to create a new layer above that, but I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to add. And then I'm also going to tap on the layer again and put on clipping mask. So anything I add now, and I'll go to a really sh sharp brush so you can see this, airbrushing hard brush anything i add onto this new layer is going to be completely contained within the shapes of the layer underneath so it's a really useful way of continuing to work on a layer without destroying anything you've already got definitely don't want it to be 100 percent. in fact we need to go back to the appropriate brush the organic rainforest brush two percent size we had it at 60 percent opacity and we can start to bring in some of this impact now so along the top edge, I'm just having it catching the light a little bit. Maybe in this bottom area, a little bit more. In fact, let's change it up. Let's go to something like the airbrushing soft brush. 5% size, but low on the opacity at 5. And then we could just have it bringing out areas in general. Why not? Yeah, okay. I'll go back to the organic. It's worth just trying out different ways of bringing it out. But I do think I like the texture within the texture i think it it does a lot okay so that's taken us so far but i'm going to create a new layer change the blend mode from normal to add and i'm going to go back to my brushes i'm going to use the spires texture still with the same color i'm going to put it six percent size and about 50 percent opacity and i'm going to zoom in and it's just going to bind some of those textures together a little bit it's just a little bit different and anywhere there's a star, perhaps we can just focus around that. Perhaps it's just helping create that sense of luminance. Now I'm reserving this for the foliage areas because if we go up here, then it can wander. This is not on a clipping mask. So this can go a little bit wild if you let it too much. So just bringing it into the mix. It's just varying up the textures a little bit, makes it a little bit more interesting. Just be mindful of the gaps. I don't want to add it into the gaps so much. So just monitor it as you're adding. You want it in some areas, but not so much in others. Now this is all on a background layer behind the tree. And I think that's got to a nice point. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the top layer and create a new layer, layer 11. I'm gonna keep the blend mode on normal. I'm gonna use the rainforest brush still. I'm gonna use this fourth color on the middle row. I'm gonna have the brush size at 2% and maybe about 80% opacity. And I'm just going to create some areas now that will cut in front of some of these branches and obscure them. Now we've still got that real nice luminance coming through in the background. 
it's still going to have an impact, but I do want to cover bits of it up. So certainly some of this foliage is going to cut in front of the branches, as well as in front of some of the things we've already just done. Again, doesn't need to be everywhere, just a few select areas, and that's fine. I'm going to create a new layer, but this time I am going to change the blend mode from normal to add again. And I'm also going to tap on it and put on clipping mask for the same reasons that I did before. Go in again, don't need to change any of the settings, but this time it's really quite vibrant. So I'm just tapping it in, just going for the top edges of what we've just created a little bit. Want some variation in tone, want some of the, the darker bits that we've just added to remain too, but I definitely want some of the highlights on top. I'm going to take that top layer and merge it down now so it's on one layer. And you can see the impact that it's having, it's quite nice. I think we're going to start condensing down many of our layers just to keep things a little bit more simple. So I'm going to go to layer 7, tap on that, merge down. Layer 10, tap on that and merge down. Layer 5, tap on that and merge down. Now I'm only merging down the blend modes that are similar, so I'm, I'm blending down or merging down when it has an N with another N or whether it has an A with another A. So there's a limit to how much I condense some of these down. That enables me now to go to layer eight, go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and blur that in a little bit more. We're gonna blur it in to about 5%. So just again, pushes it a little bit further back. And I'm gonna to go to the top slide and duplicate that and it's just gonna further ramp up that effect. And again, we can just pinch them together and that has a really nice impact. Now, I'm going to go back to layer 6, we have the branches. We've still got the alpha lock on, so that means I can go to the airbrushing soft brush with maybe this strong pink, so this fourth colour, 5% size. I'm going to have it really low at 5% opacity. And maybe I can just go into those branches, we zoom in so you can see the impact. And we don't want them to be super dark in places, so I'm just going to soften them in, especially on that kind of outer edge. Now it's not adding anything to the background, like I say, because the alpha lock is on. So you can just be a little bit free. If the branches look a little bit too dark, you can just go over them a little bit, soften them in, especially on those outer edges. Maybe put it up a little bit, actually 10%. And you can really see more rapidly that it is removing some of that intensity, some of that silhouetteness. I'll go up to the top layer, create another layer, change the blend mode from normal to add. And I'm still going to go in with the Rainforest brush and this fourth pink. I'm going to put it at 2% size and maybe about 60% strength. And then just pick up just on that outer edge again. Just some little details anywhere where you feel like it needs just a little bit of a lift. Then you can go in there and just refine it a little bit more. Just the last few touches to that foliage. Now one thing we can experiment with is going to the adjustments and playing around with noise. Now we've got various different things we can experiment with. We've got scale, we've got octaves, we've got turbulence and other things. So, and also a slider. So I'm gonna slide it up and I don't want it to be overly dramatic. I want it to maybe be about 30%. Play around with scale and you can see it just adding a real granular kind of texture to this. I'm going to put it up to about 30% on the scale. Turn the octaves well at zero. I'm not really sure. Really, we're just experimenting. I'm going to put it up to about 30%. And then we've got turbulence as well. You can have a look to your eye what it does. I'm going to put it up to max actually. Why not? We've also got billows. We've got ridges. I think I just want to affect it a little bit with that clouds, and then deselect. And I feel like it's just, when you zoom in a little bit more, it added an extra element to that, which I think is quite interesting. Okay, I'm just gonna to go to the top and create a new layer. Change the blend mode from normal to add. I'm gonna go in with the airbrushing soft brush. And I'm gonna set it to the first color on the bottom row. I'm gonna put the brush size at, well, maybe 20% and at low at 10% opacity. And just maybe in this area, I'm gonna tap it a few times, maybe tap it around like so, maybe circle it in, tap it a few more times, 
Maybe then I'll switch to maybe the fourth color on the top row. Turn it down 10%, size 10%, strength, and then just a few more taps in this area. I need to build in a focal point. And then I'm going to switch to the luminance light pen. Same color, 100% size, 50% opacity, and just in that central area. I just want it nice and big, pressing on to create a nice vibrant light there. Maybe it's the, the moon in the sky that's just really shining through. And I think that just adds another element. And with the luminance pen, and I'm going to go for a light pink, so the third color on the bottom row. I'm going to put it down to 20% size, 100% opacity. And I think I'd quite like to do just some points, some little glowing lights, almost like stars. So we've got a kind of reflection of the environment, something quite magical happening within the tree itself. We'll keep it a little bit subtle. So you just get the odd one and, and maybe is, then you can question, is that the sky or is that in the tree? So it almost looks like kind of Milky Way and Nebula space features almost within the tree too. Okay, I'm gonna create a new layer, layer 10. I'm gonna go in with the airbrushing soft brush and I'm gonna to go to my colors. I'm gonna use that first color on the bottom row. I'm gonna have it down to 3% size and about 40% opacity. And this seems strange, but we're just gonna do some wiggles here at the bottom. We're gonna have some overlapping of shapes. And we want some of the black gaps to remain through there too, but we're just, <laughs> we're just really going for the wiggles there. And then we're gonna turn it down to 2% size. And believe me, this will make more sense as we go along, but initially we're just being quite loose. And then we get up to the top, perhaps I just need to turn it down to the lowest part of 2%. And then, yeah, just create some wiggles there. Join in with the more distant things. We want some overlapping. Try not to go over the top edge too much though, having said that. Okay, then I'm gonna to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna blur that in to about the, in my example, about the 8%. And it's just created some texture initially that's gonna assist us. And now we're gonna to continue to add the highlights on top of the snow that's on the ground. Okay, we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna change the blend mode from normal to add. Still use the soft brush with an airbrushing, but we're gonna use the second color on the bottom row. And if I have it at 2% size and 10% strength opacity, and we're gonna use it, in fact, even less than that, let's put it down to five, and we're gonna use it to pick out, and I'll turn it just so it's easier to apply it. At the top edge, I've got strong lights coming in here, and it's just gonna pick out some really nice, vibrant reflections of that light on the top edge of some of these mounds. So the wiggles have done the job for us, and now we've got mounds that have highlights, Perhaps we'll turn it down even more, 1%, or maybe just into the 2%, but really at the bottom of two. And we're gonna use it, join up some of these mounds, sometimes the put in front of each other like this. And when you zoom out, it starts to make so much more sense. You created some shapes with no real effort whatsoever. Again, just wiggles. But what you do with them now, in terms of adding highlights, creates the sense that you've got a lumpy, textured snow surface. Again, just keep adding highlights on the top edges. And it's just gonna take a little bit of time just to start to build up that impression, but you can see the impact is quite strong. Keep zooming in and out just to get a sense of the effect. If I did it all zoomed out, then you know it's difficult to see how it's looking. So it is important to keep zooming in and out. And it's going to look a little bit scribbled in places and it's not a problem, it's on a separate layer. So we can use the Gaussian blur just to soften it in. But we just need to get that initial sense of highlights in. I'm gonna put the opacity up to 30. Stay low down just at the 1% or the lowest part of two, whatever works best for you. And yeah, we're just gonna bring it some slightly more intensity. I 
once you've determined some of the shapes that you like, you can just go over the edges of them a little bit more and make them pop. Oops. Now, some of them are getting more subtle as they go further into the distance. You can't see the waves quite as clearly as you could. But that's fine. You should be at a point once you've done a few, just start getting the idea and just adding more yourself, more manually. It gets a bit simpler. Perhaps the 30 is a little bit strong. Put it down to 20 again. So I just continue to add into these waves. Zoom out, check the effect, and you can start to see that it is working quite nicely, I think. And um, we're going to carry it on over this side. Once you've got to roughly this kind of point, we can go and to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we can just blur that in a bit, not too much, maybe about 4%, looks about right. Then we can go to that layer, tap on it and put on the alpha lock, which then means with the soft brush with an airbrushing, I can put the size up to, well, well maybe not too big, maybe about 5%, 20% opacity, but importantly, I'm gonna to change to a different color, the fourth color on the bottom row. And now, I can go into some of these areas and just change the hue for something cooler. Perhaps I'll even turn it on more, 30, and change it here. Bringing in that cooler influence over in this area. Then I'm gonna to go to the layer and slide and duplicate it. And you can see it's definitely too strong, but that allows us to go with one of the versions, tap on the A, and you can see it with none of it, or you can scroll it up. I'm gonna scroll up to about 30%. So it's there in the mix and it's helping, but you can determine how much of it you like and how much of it you don't. See it with or without, I think it has helped. I'm gonna merge them together and then carry on going, adding some of this bright color in the mix there. Now looking at it, the overall balance of things, I've still not refined and finished everything, but I think I wanna go back to layer four that had the stars and the general brightness of the background, I'm gonna slide and duplicate it. Now that has definitely ramped everything up to be more intense. Now, again, we can go to it, take the top version, tap on the A. We can determine how much of that we want. I really quite like it. So I'm gonna leave mine at the very top, but then I'm gonna merge them together. And now we've got a much more vibrant background, I feel. Another thing I can do is I can take layers 8, 9, 6 and 11, which are all the basic tree shapes, and merge them together. That enables me then to select layer 8, go to the selection, freehand, draw around the tree stump and all of the tree details, close the loop, go to the transform, put it on freeform, and if I'm not happy with the position or the scale, just shift it around a little bit, make it more prominent. I think I'm happier with that. Okay, before we go any further with the highlights on the top, I'm gonna to go to layer 10, I'm gonna slide and duplicate it. It's just gonna bring out a bit more of the pale blue that was underneath, tap on the top version and merge it down so we don't get carried away with the number of layers. I think I'd also quite like to go back to layer four and go in with a soft brush, maybe still this fourth color. I'm gonna put the size up to about 10%, 10% strength, and I'm just gonna bring in an even brighter luminance here at the bottom. I think really just, I wanna ramp up some of these effects even more, and that's working even more nicely. I'm gonna go back up to layer 10, tap on it, put on the alpha lock. Still with the soft brush, I'm gonna to go to maybe the fourth color on the top row. 10% size, 10% opacity, 
maybe I can just ramp up the light in here, ramp up the light in here, and just so the very background is lighter too. Back up to the top layer again, turn off the alpha lock this time, back in with the soft brush and the fourth color on the top row, the brush size down to 5% and 10% opacity. I'm just gonna get in there and just use it to soften in even more. I don't mind if it goes up into the, the sky area too, because it adds to the general atmosphere. But I want to soften that in, bleach it in a bit more. We don't want the dark colors in the background. Same over on this side, just a bit more either side. I'm gonna go back to layer eight where the tree was on in fact, with the eraser set to the soft brush. 5% size, 40% opacity will do. And I'm just going to remove some of that from the background just so that's not interfering anymore on either side too. Back up to layer 11, soft brush, turn it down, 2% size, 10% opacity, and then we can really get in there. In fact, we'll go down to the 1% size. We can really get in there and just super define some of these. We're gonna turn it up 30%. And then that background and this snow are kind of nicely merging together. Remember some of the top of the mounds for some highlights. Leave a shadow area. Move back over to this side. Again, add some highlights. In this area too. We're gonna have some snow in the shadow, but we need to turn it down to maybe 10%. And we can just have some snow that and the background, or rather the, the ground and the tree are kind of merging together a little bit better. Maybe back to the, we'll go to the third color actually on the bottom row. It's a really nice vibrant pink now, much brighter. So we can use this for some of the foreground snow details, really bring out a bit of a pop. So we were very fast when we created the the wiggles and the mounds, but it does require a little bit more care and time at this stage, just to go over them and try and refine them with the reflections. So we were very quick with the shape formation, but we do need to spend a bit of time just refining. And I think it's worth it to get a really nice effect. Go back to the second color, 40% strength, maybe slightly bigger on the 2%. And I'm just gonna go in there and just soften some of these in a little bit. It's just ramping them up, but also because it's slightly bigger brush size on that 2%, it's gonna have a softening impact as well. And then the pale blue, fifth color on the top row. Definitely don't want it to be as big. Bottom end of two, 40% opacity. I just wanna go in there and just use it to pick out some strong highlights just in this background area. And then we're nearly done with the highlights. We could always go in with a smudge set to the soft brush too, and have it at soft brush, have it at something, I don't know, 2% size, 40 odd percent, 45 percent strength. And if you get any areas in the foreground that are just a little bit jarring, you can just soften them in with the smudge anyway. Make them just a little bit gentler. And that could be quite a nice way of just softening that in. Whilst we're on the blend mode of add, we'll go on, on this top layer, we'll go in with the luminance light pen. Maybe go in with the second color on the bottom row still. And some of these pink areas, we'll just create some sparkles. I don't want to do too much of it, but just some points of light in the mix, I think be quite nice. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. If you've got any ideas of other things you'd like to see me do, then please leave a suggestion in the comments and I shall see you back here soon. Bye for now.